sit here with Master uh, Ellie Tom Elamine <laughs> here in my home in Chicago, and you just got here from Ohio. Right. And so, uh, did you have any spiritual adventures on your way here? Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, when we're dealing with self-realization, that's a word we throw out there. But when you're on your journey in life, your path, there's some things that people can tell you. You can read a book and stuff, but until you go into the experience, that's your own personal experience. It's like a mark on you. And you know without a shadow of a doubt when you don't have to get it from external sources no more. You just went through that experience. Mm. So on the way out here, even though we talk about the oneness consciousness and we had these different experiences of it and uh, we're all being reflected from the same source, we say these things, we had little experiences as we go. But as I'm coming out here, I'm actually looking at the sun and the sun basically, I see that that's the mirror image that's feeding everybody. So we're actually our how should I say? Being reflected from the sun, from the oneness of it, it is animating all of these different images down here. So we're coming from that source. But instead about me talking about it, I actually had an experience where I saw that and that was just so, uh, it, it just took my life to a whole nother level just now. Wow. So even though I've been on this path for 20 years, that just goes to show you that the revelations that just means something being revealed will constantly keep happening in your spiritual growth because energy does not stop. See, the physical has its limits to it, but the experience of energy will keep going and going and going. So we're just even scratching the surface when we talk about food freedom. It just seemed big to somebody who never heard it before. It was big to me one time. But right now, since I'm living this, Food freedom, to me, seemed easy mm. because I've been in the game for a while. There's other things that I'm seeking out. But until people keep climbing those steps, everybody had these degrees, you'll find out more and more. That's why there's a saying that says uh, you're ready to grow spiritually when you find out how ignorant you are. Mm. So even when I get this Eureka, you know, that I've just found something new, it seems like I've got to start all over and I'm ignorant again because there's so much growth that has to keep coming out of us wow. as we keep staying on this path. That's why you don't have to give up. You don't have to quit. It'll just keep feeding you and feeding you. People say, well, after eating and not after having sex, what's next? Don't ask that question. Just begin where you're at because for me to be here, it seems like there's so much I got to do because, first of all, I don't want to die like the traditional people do. We, see, we hear this about taking the body up in the light. So even when I had that revelation today, that let me know that that's for real. This is where we're being broadcasted from. Mm. It's all energy. You're looking at things differently. It's a perception change. That's really trippy. When uh, I got you and you told me this uh, story or this you know, revelation that you had right. about how we're reflections of the sun in the physical dimension, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had a lot of correlations with other things that I would learned from other places about the spiritual beings who live in the sun. Right. How it's really the, the Christ or the logos back of the sun that's physically manifested as the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, and how uh, we're all connected to our own stars, but particularly, and so in, in correlating that with the fact that you know, we're all gods and that we're all sons of God. And right. That God is manifested as the logos or whatever as the sun. Then we all have these little sons in us that basically report up. Their umbilical cords are straight up connected. All connected to that. the same source. Mm -hmm. And even though, see, we talk about the physical sun. Some people that offends them because it takes away the invisible God. But keep in mind that not only the photons of light that we see physically and how the sun's heat uh, touches us, it's giving off a lot of invisible things we don't see. You understand, uh, invisible frequencies and stuff like this. And that just goes to show you in the esoteric circles that truth could be hidden in plain sight. Mm. 
So even though the sun is affecting everybody, it's there every day. Uh, what happened to us where you cannot see that it's giving us life? It's the power. It's the source. That's where you're being broadcaster from. But we've been so dumbed down, the perception became blind, so the average person is taking us on for granted. But then when you do come into subconsciousness, okay, we feed off it from the fruits. The animals, they feed off of stuff in nature, so okay, we need the sun. But it's more than that. The sun is animating us. See, on one level, even though I use the term breatharian, what, you know, that's just a word we're using, something we're breathing. But we're breathing in the sun. I mean, it's doing so many things on so many levels, but it's meeting us at the level that we can uh, comprehend. It's meeting everybody at their comprehension level. So that's why if you want to expand your consciousness, it do come through some type of awareness of a new download on how you perceive in things. Mm. Sort of like when we talked about Buddha. Buddha, when he went under the Bodhi tree, he wasn't enlightened. But all of a sudden, as he's sitting there and start working on himself, he achieved enlightenment up under the Bodhi tree. But what changed? He didn't do no special exercises. What changed was his perception. That means that the battle is right in how we see things, how we're perceiving it. And you could be blinded, spiritually blinded, due to how you're perceiving things. And all a person is doing to you, whether if it's a teacher, a master, or a regular person, it doesn't matter. When a person gives you some type of enlightenment, they're helping you to see things differently than what you were seeing them before. And that's what we call empowerment or spiritual enlightenment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you shed off that old thought process, see, even when we teach this knowledge, we're just giving people a chance to see things differently. Look at things differently. And humanity, right now, we're in the age of information. You know, we got the internet. We got more connections than ever. All this information coming. And what's happening is uh, we are seeing things differently. That's why everything is being challenged. What is the right diet? Everybody's still arguing about it. All the science and technology, there's not one plate that's coming out saying this is it. You understand? All the science and technology, but we are at least knowing now that there's a lifestyle, certain habits to count, that will what? Get off certain uh, diseases or sicknesses, you know, compared to some other ones. That's a start. Well, we can know that, and that's a perception change. Why could some people lose weight and some can't? But then it's even going deeper than that, how some energies that we have trouble with that's in us don't got nothing to do with us being stupid or nothing like that. It also got passed on to us from our ancestors. There is a thing called epigenetics. You know, just based off of a person's lifestyle and their present, you can pass those things off to your offspring. So we know this now. So a lot of things that we could be dealing with, you know, why am I having uh, food um, problems and stuff like this, binge eating? And there could have been an ancestor that had trouble eating, you know, had trouble getting food, and it's affecting you in this lifestyle because they put the program in you where you got food, binge eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they got nothing to do with why because some people do this or some can't. We're dealing with so many energies on so many different levels. That's why as we deal with these revelations going on a breatharian journey or whatever journey you're on, it becomes real. But we know we can deal with something tangible now. And we're all from the same source again and we're helping each other. That's the thing about it. <laughs> in my past, everybody I've been with and stuff like that, there was something that they added to the puzzle. You understand? Whether if I needed things added on or taken away. And you can see that now the more you keep evolving yourself on this path. Is mm. this making sense? <laughs> yeah. I think I am. I, I'm getting it a little bit. Uh, my head's gone in a different place a little bit. <laughs> it's actually where we, I was originally going to go with this, so excuse me, and excuse me to the listeners who are really engaged in that. And that has to do with the time that you met your consciousness. So when I met mm. you in Ohio uh, a couple months back, you had said this, and looking back on that, I didn't recognize what it was that you were saying. But what you had said is that 
you had met your consciousness. And that reminded me of something that Rudolf Steiner uh, talks about, and he says it's the single greatest thing that could happen to a person is for them to meet their consciousness. And he says that being resides in the hierarchy of the cherubim. Mm -hmm. And so of the higher hierarchies of the angelic beings. And so, uh, and then I watched back at that. I know as I changed the subject, and I was like, what was oh, I thinking? Oh, this is good. Yeah, so now let's get on it. How did you find your consciousness? What was that like? What preceded that? Well, everybody had what we call this voice talking to us, and it seemed like it tells you the right thing to do. And we call it our conscious or whatever. But in the spiritual realms, they'll say it could be a spirit guide. It can be uh, an ancestor that's helping you, a guardian angel. But it's this external voice that didn't come out of you. It's an external voice that tells you something to go meet him or go over here. And we listen to it at times and we say, my intuition told me that. But this external voice, see, consciousness does not need a physical body. We got to keep that in mind. And the thing about it, science is running into it now, or they been, have been doing it, but they've just been denying it because they got this thing called the scientific process that must be measured up to, and that's where everybody's stuck at. But even though some scientists want to break out of that because consciousness, and they're doing it more and more, dealing with string theory and stuff like that, how this atom can make this decision and this one will make the same over here, okay, stuff like that. But consciousness don't need a physical body. But when you're dealing with yourself like this, we use different excuses depending on what your background is or how you're interpreting that energy. Like some, some people might say it's Jesus talking to them. It's Babaji talking to them. It's my consciousness talking to them. This thing that's following you around that seems like it's helping you, it's guiding you. But as you really start working on yourself, wherever your declaration is at, to really get to know more about yourself. And some people don't get there. They'll still keep that spirit guide. But for me, I began to break it off because I started to challenge myself more, go into myself more. In other words, there was a time I needed a God, and then after a while, I didn't need a God no more. I took off the training wheels. I wanted to be my own God <laughs> to see what I can do. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Then there was a time I had the spirit guide and stuff like this. There's people who were good with spirit guides. But after a while, if I wanted to see what I can do, I don't want no spirit guide no more. So that shows you the power we got on how you can use your training wheels of thought or you could take them off if you don't need them no more. So the more and more I began to take off the training wheels that we use to try to get by and how we read these energies, that's what I mean by I met my own consciousness. Come to find out that external voice that was outside of me was me. Mm -hmm. Sort of like I had that other revelation that as the beam of sun was coming to me, I am the sun. That was a reflection of me. That's why I was looking back at me. That all seeing I. So it all goes hand in hand, but it comes on where a person's at in their development. And when you stay on this path, like I can say it to you, but it becomes tangible and real. When it comes to you, you have your own revelation. If this makes any sense like yeah. that. So like I say to people uh, a lot of times, a person's walking on the bottom of the ocean, they could use, try to get the best words to tell you about it, but you won't know how the bottom of the ocean feels in your experience until you do it. So that's why this path is so good now on where we at, even dealing with the breath in the journey, cleaning yourself out. This is the vessel you're in. Everybody can agree on that. Everybody got a physical body, as we know right now. So if you clean this out, the frequency is going to change. The vibration is going to change. And whatever you do to the physical body changes the thought process. You'll start feeling better, uh, thinking differently. You grab in more information. You understand? So these are the preliminaries of going on these higher, what we call, spiritual experiences. But it's more than just that. When a thought changes, it changes the physical body automatically. See, it goes hand in hand because they're one and the same thing. So when you start combining these different things and go all the way in, and don't give up because we had a good conversation earlier about, well, what if I fail or what if I mess up? There is no failure to mess up. Life is like an art, like you're a painter or whatever. 
And every once in a while, like when I was taking art class, you think you put the wrong color in or you made a mistake because you went outside the lines. But an art teacher will say, well, that's not a mistake. Blend it in. Make something else. So that's how we're doing our life. We're artists of it. You mm -hmm. become good at it. So when you're on a breath in the path, just to add that in, or even higher di uh, diet changes. I don't even want to say that. Just by you being human, you already are an artist of your life, no matter what you're creating. Because we are creators and do go back to that. You understand? Now there's other forces of consciousness that's affecting us. That's what we have to wake up to also. But however, they're not negative at all. We just perceive it to be that again. That's why, again, when Buddha was under the Budai, Bodai tree, he said evil don't exist. Now, before he sat down under the Bodai tree, evil existed. But when he left and got his enlightenment, it didn't exist. That means it was all a mental change that he had to make to understand this. Evil is created or a source is created within our own mind. If that could get eradicated, then that usually comes about due to ambition on things that we think that we need to try to capture. Like happiness, comfort, we try to capture those things through an ambitious idea. And you try to do it for yourself and your loved ones. It's understandable. But you can't capture that. It's inside of you and everybody has it. See, so when you use ambition to just try to capture it for yourself and for your loved ones, then you're going to make life miserable for everybody else. You're going to become a tyrant. You're going to keep others from uh, getting the same things that you have, and there's enough for everybody. Greed sets in and all of this other stuff. You understand? So it's starting from the human thought process because nature is not producing evil. Evil is coming from man. Mm. <laughs> and... That reminds me of uh, Shakespeare's quote, nothing is evil in and of itself, but it is thinking that makes it so. Right. So, you know, and that's something that I think is interesting, even from a biblical perspective, because, uh, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, a vegetarian shouldn't judge a meat eater and a meat eater shouldn't judge a vegetarian because what's sin for one person isn't necessarily sin for the other. Exactly. And the Bible also says that all things are lawful to him who believes, but not all things are expedient. So all of a sudden you're doing things that would appear to be unlawful, but rather since all things are actually lawful, it's a really a matter of whether it's expedient or not. And mm -hmm. so then we're getting rid of the labels of right and wrong, good and evil. And that's still when you're using the word expedient. Let's use the word a need, need to be met. In other words, it's common sense, for instance, you've got your young babies, your family, and stuff like this. And, and of course, if you're in a situation not to eat meat, don't do it. You can make a better decision than that. But there was a good movie on one time, you know, Roots, where it showed the African-American slavery. Mm -hmm. And Kuta Kinte said, I'm not going to eat that pig. Mm -hmm. And then Fittler said, well, you better eat that pig if you want to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because due to the situation you're in, that's what's available for that need. Mm. You understand? Now, when your situation gets different, where you don't need to do that no more, you can cast off that and go into your new need of survival due to where you're at. You understand? So that's why even when I tell people about the breath in process, what I need to find out is what type of situation you're living in. Mm. That means a lot on your need, and is there a need to be a breath in at the time? Now, you know, I'm a married individual, and my spouse is not, uh, is an interested bystander, but is not as interested as I am in the subject. Right. And so I'm compelled, like, look, I need to go down this path. I'm going to keep trying toward the breatharian thing until I die. Maybe I get it. Maybe I don't. We'll see. But uh, my spouse isn't really interested in that. So then we have food conflicts because now mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you're not eating. Well, I still need you to make my food or you're not eating. And you know, that's the source of your grouchiness or you're not eating. And now, you know, I feel alone. And so then it's like, all of a sudden now I'm eating out of like guilt or out of somebody else's thing. And I've heard you say, okay, if you're married, then, you know, maybe it's not, and I can't, it's hard for me to accept that. Right. I want it both ways. Right. Now, here we go. <laughs> Dealing with those needs, the families. Food also have destroyed 
a lot of families. Belief systems. Because that's what foods are, belief systems. See, when you go on a diet, a diet is just, it's not really for the physical body, it's for the training in the mind. Mm. Uh-oh. Mm. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, food and these belief systems have destroyed a lot of families because that don't have to be everybody's agreement just because somebody else is seeking something they call higher. And it does affect the whole family, for instance. Food does bring a family together. See, let's make this clear. Food, sexual relations, and drink is a necessity to live in this realm. Did I say that? Now, if I say that, what do breatharianism mean? And when people hear about breatharianism, they do it wrong, or they say it wrong, or they got the wrong understanding. They think, I said that you can live without eating or drinking. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is, first of all, you have to redefine food. That's what we're doing. You eat because of energy. And once you redefine the nutrition and nourishment, you have to find another way to get that, uh, how should I say, nutrition and nourishment. So a lot of people put the tape on their mouth and they understand, they don't understand why they're unsuccessful. Because in this realm of energy that we live in, it's about energy flow. You understand? The exchange of energies. So this physical body works with energy. That's what it works with, not cut it off. Uh-oh. Is this making sense now? So this is a perception again. This is why the education of it is have to be key. And a person really have to listen and understand. So when I say meditation is the foundation, what that is, that's a tool to start taking your physical body, taking your mind to deal with the subtle energies that's already available to us. Without that, it's not going to happen. So therefore, people have died on this path, all this other stuff, but let's go back to the families again, and if the need is met. Now, once you understand how to harness energy from other places, perfect practice made perfect, and you become good at it, of course that will help you in the future and help you for your life right now. It will take you to another degree, without a doubt, because you can't starve no more. You know how to get energy and extract it from anywhere, but to act like that you just don't need to eat. You see how that changes? One is saying it's still feeding, but it's feeding energetically. The other one is saying it don't need to eat. And, mm -hmm. and if that's not in your understanding, that's where you're going to have problems. Gotcha. Okay, so what you're <laughs> saying is even in a married situation or whatever, it's not that somebody s stops eating. They, they're finding an alternative food source. Right. And they're finding this through uh, meditation, through a change in their thought process, mm -hmm. and then then they can start to process pranic energy from the sun and the protein out of the air, and the whole human photosynthesis thing can. Right now, this is why it could be a problem for a relationship, because all right, let's just take an individual. First of all, when you stop eating or eat less. You have to find out what to do, what to replace with that time that you had when you were spending all that time chasing food. That is an adjustment. It's sort of like when I went from eating processed foods and meats so or how long it took to cook it and go to a restaurant and get all this stuff. But now you're going to eat more live and raw foods. So instead of going to the store grocery shopping, I could go once a month. Get all your processed food, load up the freezer. But when you start going live and raw foods, they don't last that long. So I'll be hitting the grocery store three or four times a week. Mm. That right there changes the whole lifestyle. Get off work. I got to stop by the store. You understand? And then boom, three or four times a week. So that changes the lifestyle of how my time is going. Everything else is going. Then when you even back up further from that, you got to find out new things to do with your life. Somebody just called me and was like, I can't hardly sleep. What did you do with all of your time? Well, I said, well, now I know how to play different instruments. I know how to crochet. I wrote books. I do this. I, I learned all of that having more time on my hands. 
You understand? But if you're a person who don't know what to do at that time, the first thing you're going to do is go back eating. Now, that's on an individual level. Now, when you're in a relationship with a spouse, y'all sharing time with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it gets deep. So their time, they're not planning on not giving up food. So their time is still going to be circled around food. And your time, y'all want to spend time together, right? Mm -hmm. So you're either going to have to follow them to help them get their food together, which that'll be hard on you going through a transition. Or if you break away, they're going to feel lonely. Why ain't you with me no more? Mm -hmm. See, I even got friends now. We usually, if we do hang, it'll be about three days. Because I feel like I'm wasting my time because they need to go eat now. So I got to go with them. Or I don't have to, but we're hanging out. Mm -hmm. Then I got to wait. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm wasting, I could be doing something else. So after a while, it gets boring and we're not even in a relationship. We're just hanging out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you see how that could be crucial if you're in a relationship and you're going for these higher levels of uh, food freedom, but the family's not. So there's going to be a divide, just dealing with time-wise. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I think on the positive, uh, or on the other side of that too, uh, Neil, my spouse, was... Uh, impacted by when I went through Akai and Camille's eight-day process. Yeah. Seeing me go through that, uh, he decided to take on intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. And he just does that to this day. That's for the last year. Right. So even after my sort of like kind of inconsistent attempt at okay, trying it, and then a spursly, and then I'm like eating, and then s still doing that. So mm -hmm. there is that... You know, even more fruit. Oh, well, absolutely. See, anything you do positive is going to affect the whole family. What I'm trying to say is, when people say, I want to become a brethren and they got this relationship with this whole family, don't think about just jumping all the way. At least do something impactful where everybody should at least eat healthy. Or if you do go on a, a brethren journey, I had to tell a man, well, won't you eat with your family on the weekend? You know, something like that because it is causing friction and you know it. So you have to be truthful with yourself or where you're at. I'm just talking from the sidelines, but I've kind of been through it also. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because when you're working on your development, there's a term that they use that a yogi spends a lot of time to themselves. Now listen at that. Now a yogi, the word yogi just means to clean or union with. So you're getting a union with the more subtle energies, the higher energies. So you start spending a lot more time. Remember I told you about that intuition type voice? Mm -hmm. Now it's separate from you, but it is its own entity or its own consciousness. You want to get to know that voice more to become good with it. So you spend a lot of time so you can hear that voice. Now, even in the church or stuff like that, listen to that inner voice, you know, in religion. It's just small voice. Right. Yeah. So you can't do it being in a lot of chaos or talking to somebody else all the time. You're spending a lot of time now communion with the unseen forces, the other uh, aspects of consciousness. A lot of people ain't there yet. <laughs> so are you holding conversation with this other person? Absolutely. Okay. Because who you have a conversation with the most? Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so it is yourself again. That's when you get introduced to consciousness. But now you know which voice to listen to. That's always correct. They're always all known. You get comfortable with it. You understand? Mm -hmm. But it takes time in your process. That's why there's this breakaway period coming along where a person do go on their own little spiritual hodge. You can't take nobody with you on that. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're too busy talking about something else. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. So that's why I tell people you have times to a time period on when to come in and something. Don't rush it if you got little kids running around. Of course a baby that's two years old gonna be crying in everything, put that down. You ain't meditating. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just a reality. You need to meditate. To go to another fuel source dealing with the breath there and journey. I used to say this to people and then pretty soon they'll come back and say you was right. I know I'm right. You ain't in the right situation yet. Mm -hmm. You must be Slow down your life 
so you can have time to work with these subtle forces. There's a reason why they say subtle. See, we're creatures of external expression. We like things with big packages, you know, bright. And even a person that's intellectual, if you don't have enough of those things of uh, food, sexual relations, or drink, they're even going to put you down. That's what society does. Society will put you down if you don't go to enough of those things. If you got an abundance of them, they cause us problems. And if you ain't got enough of them, they cause problems. Mm -hmm. Society does that too. Mm -hmm. So therefore, <laughs> man, this is getting good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're worried. So therefore, as you're on this journey again, you got time to do it. The kids will get older soon. You understand, your desires about certain things in life will be a lot more minimum. You already did your career or, or stuff like that or the job, or you should have at least the job you wanted to be into and stuff like this. Compared to when you're younger, you know, I want to be this, I want to do that, I need to buy the house, I need to buy that. When you get older, there should be a change of thought or some things you already accomplished, and then you're ready for the spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, you got more time to yourself, you see things develop, you don't need to be with the kids, you just go visit the grandkids every once in a while, call it a day. <laughs> but the main thing is to work on yourself. Now the problem with the older generation is, their health probably got a certain way where they don't know they can reverse it. You understand? So that's another build up that you gotta put in your mind. You understand? A lot of people, they live their younger life, if only if I was younger, then the older person, the younger person, they ain't got no money and are not established yet, don't know enough yet. So there's this in-between on where you pick up at the journey. But it's all a journey, but it's how you take it. But those, these could be some good years. And that's why as we teach the breath in process to the younger generation, you don't have to jump total food freedom at once. I look at some people, that's not what we're saying. It should be some time in your life, but have these life experiences, but don't let the experience overwhelm you. Don't let it take you out. Don't let it uh, fragment you so much that you can't get up. See, because you can even have a habit that when you're younger, it will cause you a lot of problems when you get older. So that's what we try to wake up the young generation for. They're doing a good job, you know, for the most part. <laughs> but this is good. <laughs> so, and, you know, I think there's a lot of people who are extremists like me. You know, they want to go all in here, all in there. And I think that's why, you know, breatharian appeals to a, a lot of people like that. Because, right. Oh, yeah, no food all together, you know, and uh, without any sort, any sense of either a moderation or balance or. Right. And then, you know, then you have a problem with consistency, which is one of your big talking points, is, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, you're like shining brightly for a moment, then you're out and you're over here again. And, right. And so. Um, you're right. The Breatharian message cut, catch a lot of gun ho people. All or nothing, they, this mindset, and all, this, all they're going to do is, see, one thing about the Breatharian process, it will humble you because you're going you're gonna to come up short. Mm -hmm. It ain't got nothing to do with that ego. Oh, when I put my mind into something, I always hear it. I'll make it happen, and here we go. You're about to get broken because <laughs> you're dealing with higher intelligent spirits. Like I said, consciousness don't need a physical body. And if you think you're going to run up in there any old type of way, absolutely not. This ain't the physical world. <laughs> it's going to purge you inside out, take you through the right experiences to clean you out, whether you realize it or not. It already sees what's going on with you, what energies you're dealing with. You're dealing with an intelligence. See, again, we don't want to say it because we're not talking religious, but you're dealing basically with a God force. Mm. This is where we're at. You ain't coming up in a, in a temple in the old type of way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, and that's interesting you say that, and I think it's so easy because it's not, like out of sight, out of mind. Like, yeah, it's right under your nose, but it's invisible. Right. And so you forget, like, you know, the power that, you know, we're dealing with. The power we're dealing with. It's so quiet, so we're sometimes we think, oh, it's passive, or it's not listening, or it doesn't care, or... Absolutely. It's doing something else right now, and I'm doing my own thing. Right. So, so just like I told you, for me, like people say, did you get hungry and stuff like this? And I say, no. But what took it from me wasn't me. It's that consciousness again. Mm -hmm. See, no matter how you try, that's not what it's about. 
it's going to purge you. And it will, it'll come that day, it'll take it from you. So do we trust by faith that it's, it, that's basically its agenda for everybody, is that everybody become clean to the point where it can be completely dependent on the spiritual force? Where well, everybody's going to, see, the sun is dictating our growth. Why do we say this? They got a thing now talking about we got what? Carbon 12 is going to go to carbon 7. You ever hear of that? No, I don't know about that. Oh, all right. What they're saying is there's a DNA change taking place. Why would they say that? Because as the sun is bringing the radiation to the earth, scientists been knew how uh, it stayed out of the... Now, I don't know the scientific terminology here, but it's changing the, the, radio, the radiation that's coming on how it affects physical matter. There used to be a constant number, but now that number is changing due to the radiation that's coming from the sun. There's more that's hitting the earth now. So it's, so not only it has the power to, what, change these different uh, uh, things on the planet dealing with radiation, of course it also affects our DNA. It's going to change you also if it's changing other life forms. The sun is dictating that. So just like as, so they're saying, this is a theory. There's a carbon-7 theory that the carbon-12 is going to transmute into the carbon-7. Uh, That's just a theory, though. Is that possible? If that happens, it says that different things will open up in the body and stuff like this, but there's another scientific agenda saying, but it won't last long because being carbon-7, uh, it'll be unstable. You know, but that's just a theory also. Mm -hmm. But one thing is for sure, the sun is changing everything on the planet, just due to the radiation. So therefore, it's also, we got to understand as humans, it's changing our consciousness. So when you see this age of information, we, this isn't happening, the sun is doing it. You are a light being, so you're being dictated by the light. Mm -hmm. There's no way, uh, it's fuss hands about it. And see, even when we talk about diet changes, eating less, lighten up your diet, we're just saying that the radiation in the atmosphere is, is going up so high, it's not going to stop. That's why they use a global warming or whatever. It's not going to stop. But we're doing that to help the average individual because that will be too dense on you. You're going to feel bad. See, people feel bad when they eat now. It's too dense what you're doing to yourself. Everything is lightening up. The more you light up and start dealing with the more subtle energies, you feel better. That's telling you right there, ding. <laughs> and it's way different than it was in the past. So now even we deal with the, this breatharian knowledge, in the last five years, it really got big. This ain't no coincidence. Even me on my conquest as I'm coming out, I know I'm being led by the light. It wasn't me. I, if it was up to me, somebody else would be doing this. I ain't qualified. You know how we talk ourselves out of it to try to do the self-sabotage frequency. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I ain't got no choice. I just came to terms with what I was created for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And, you know, you're like one of the, you know, I would say like the most prolific breatharians out there. Like you put out a video every day, it seems like. One or two <laughs> videos, constant content. And it's always full with new information. And for the people probably uh, watching or listening also, you know, if you stay tuned to your content, inevitably, at least for me, you find like really deep, significant synchronicities happen. Like I'll have, I'll have a dream and then I'll wake up and Ellie Tom is broadcasting and guess what? You're talking about what I was just dreaming about. <laughs> or I was just talking or thinking about something and then I turn you on and you're talking about that thing. This happens all the time, and it's like this guy is in touch with whatever's putting it into my head is coming out of his mouth from the same source. Because we're coming from the same source. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is channeling as the information comes through. There's days I wake up and don't even think about it. You know, all of a sudden it hit me real hard, boom, 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 boom. Somebody be like, that's just what I needed. Mm -hmm. But that same source, and you know what you're, like I said, I had to come to terms with what I'm being used for, just a vessel. And you're feeding so many people, and that's basically what you're doing. But in the meantime, I'm growing also, everybody's growing, and then there's people that's feeding me also. So everything's feeding each other. Boom, 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 boom. 
but we're all one source. So that's why, again, we don't have to worry about will the world change or not, or you know how we think about that world. Will we come up short? Absolutely not. The light is dictating where everybody's going, and everybody's coming, willingly or unwillingly. It's sort of like that, that, that's why the, the information is so prolific on how it's hitting everybody. And everybody can feel it. I'm not talking to the physical person, the intellect. I'm talking to the light that's in everybody. Mm -hmm. That's where everybody, can, after you get done, they can feel it and see that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with. <laughs> and, and do you, like what you just said, believe that one day when the whole world is basically uh, affected by this energy, is the world going to go breatharian? Is the, the whole world going to enter into the kingdom oh, we got, at once? We got so much to look forward to. See, now this is where it gets good. We got so much to look forward to. In the future, you got so many landmass changes that's going to take place. You understand? We got to figure that out. Then we got all this other stuff that's happening. Let's say, uh, for instance, planets travel and stuff like this. Of course, we're going to hit those other places. But I guess what's trying to hit us is we need another body in, other, in, order, in, in order to do it. That's what's hitting us right now. We got to wake up to that. And we got to take it from myth to reality just like anything else. We are light beings. So there is a lot more that we're capable of doing. Even in science, they're saying we're in this field of all, what, potential, possibilities. Okay, we're, and there was things like, say, 50, 60 years ago that used to come on TV. It looked at like science fiction, but we're doing it now. Now, if that's on the external level, now here we are now doing things in the physical level we never thought we'll do before. Like for instance, when you look at the Olympics, for instance, soon as somebody break an Olympic record, I don't see nobody that can break that. But it won't be long somebody do it again. See, we're a growing consciousness. We're gonna break up out of this because that's what we do. We always look for new ways of bettering something, doing something, and also growing. So this is a good age we in now because the knowledge is coming out now more and more about before this physical body, we didn't care nothing about it. All we cared about was the spirit. But now we're saying that the spirit and the physical body has to merge together. Mm. And, and when they merge together, the spirit is so powerful, it will sustain the physical body and it will have it do some things that we didn't even think was possible. This is where we're at right now. I'm living proof of it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're putting it in front of us, and then people are being inspired, and then they're going in that path. Absolutely. And they're starting their own thing. They're going around teaching people. and it's, Absolutely. It's really and see, like what I said before, food, sexual relations, and drink is a necessity. But what you're doing on this path is you're finding new ways to get your nourishment, your nutrition, whether if it's physical food or in a liquid form, what we call drink, because we're living in water. Your body picks up water, it absorbs it, but you must come into that realization. It's all over the place. And then when we talk about sexual relations, of course we're sitting here because somebody has sex. That's how the human race continues. But also you don't need to keep spending your sexual energy like that. You can use that also, see food, sex, and drink is all one and the same thing. Sexual energy feeds the body. <laughs> so it's this, uh, I think I heard the term rasa used to describe this uh, sexual essence, the vitality in a person. And so what is the sexual uh, equivalent then of breath, in terms of breatharianism as it relates to food? How, is, how, how do you mean that? So well, I know that, you know, seed retention. Heat equals energy. Wherever there's heat at, there's energy. That's why when I'm pointing at the sun today, matter of fact, the sun will give us enough energy within an hour that the world uses in a year, 10 times over, if not more. That's a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Now, that just shows that we don't know, even know how to harness it. Even when we've got our little solar panels and we're learning more and more, that's child's play. You understand? But that's how much energy is hitting the planet every single day. And you ain't even got to be directly under the sun. You're in an electromagnetic field of the sun. 
So even at nighttime, you know, it's night now, the energy's high. We can make energy balls, start playing with energy work. You're still in the electric. You're in the sun. Just don't realize it. Mm. <laughs> but that's how much energy. Now, this is what we got to understand. Just because we haven't created the physical instruments that knows how to grab all that energy yet, the bodies know how. That's why this is ancient knowledge. There were some people in the ancient times we could see off the symbolism who was doing it. That's why we got this information. They Basically, as I look at it, they wrote that information for us right now. See, even when I was over in uh, Egypt and I looked at the hieroglyphics on the tombs, it don't matter how many books I read about that, that just shows you even our perception must change on how we're looking at the ancients now. We can't go off of the books we already read. All of this has to be turned over again. So I saw something totally different. I see breatharianism on there. I see uh, 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 physical immortality there. But when we got those books before, those are what? Some of your English writers, and I say that because most of your books is written in English on the planet. So that came from their perspective. But as we wake up and we learn in a new perception, let us relook at it again. It's telling a whole different story. <laughs> so when somebody is placing the ankh into somebody else's mouth, what do you see? This is this uh, like a pranic energy source? Is this the logos? Is it just this, the symbol for eternal life? It like as a token is being in some of these hieroglyphics is being used and held and even uh, ingested in different ways. Oh, absolutely. See. Let's just take religion, for instance. Religion is basically saying, this is a story of, of man's relationship with God. That's what they're saying. And in ancient times, they were just basically, okay, we're changing that word now. Man's relationship with nature. Man's relationship with the universe. So no matter if you use the word God, nature, the universe, infinity, the source, they're all talking about the same thing. You have a relationship with something else. Because everything is collective and whole, of course you got a relationship with it. See, man's uh, problem is he thinks he's by himself and he don't have a relationship with nothing else. That's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it's kind of like a, it's a catch-22, though. In order to see it, in order to know it's there like a man wants to see it, but in order to see it, you have to know it's there. So really, you have to grow grow to realize it, to meet it where it's at. And you have to do that by faith, right? So, I mean, otherwise, how, how is a person to know? I mean, they of course, they look around them and they see space and they see an object there and it's outside of them. And the only way to grow... Well, we don't even need to be that spooky about it. Everybody kind of knows that there's a cooperation that can take place with a group of people where things will go a lot easier. All we need to do is start there. Cooperation. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the word right there. To cooperate. To get along. To get a plan. Get everybody's needs met. Everybody will agree on that. Mm -hmm. That's spirituality. Mm -hmm. All this other stuff, we don't need to be spooky about it. And you can see it. See, we say these things you can't see, but you can see it. But by seeing it, you mean clairvoyantly, right? I mean, because other than speaking and being materialistic about spirituality... It's sort of like... You're in this room, somebody walks in, and there's some trouble happening with some people. You can kind of feel it in a room. Mm -hmm. And I ain't had nothing to do with you didn't know it was there or didn't exist. You can see the trouble. You can feel it. So we act like these things we don't know and you have to go by faith. This ain't got nothing to do with blind faith. We have enough information now where we're on paper. We can create a perfect society. On paper, we can write that down and everything will be free and everybody will be happy. But that's on paper. <laughs> Make it on reality, this needs to be changed. Where everybody will actually carry that out. See, the human being needs to, to, to develop altruism. And altruism, that's how nature works. Especially the higher forces is telling you that. We all can see it. It's working for the whole. It sees the whole. 
But the human being, again, he's the one that's separated. That's why we say the source of evil is in the human mind. It ain't in nature. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the, uh, the confusion for me is because, in a sense, we're coming from different places. Because I'm thinking in terms of there's a physical, and then there's a spiritual life, and then there's a divide. And you're operating from the physical has been... Uh, raised to the vibration of the spiritual, right? That is spiritual the spirituality and the physicality uh, or the materiality are one and the same, and so from that perspective, there isn't a difference when you're talking about the physical and the spiritual in terms. And of why is I'm thinking like that? Because as we sitting in this room, all right. Now look at the perception. We're both sitting in this room with these physical bodies. We're breathing this air. I'm being nourished by it. That's why I say I'm a breatharian. So for me, this room is whole. Mm. Now for a person who's still eating and stuff, of course, it automatically puts you in duality. Mm -hmm. So you don't see the spirit and the physical meeting. I see the spirit and the physical together. So that's why when I tell people I'm in a breatharian world, this is what I'm living in, what are you talking about? This ain't no breath in your world. Yeah, it is. For a person who's living in that perception. So are you seeing spirits walking around? I'm looking at one right now. So you, you don't know you're a spirit. <laughs> no, fair enough. Like, I, I mean, I might think I am. Maybe I don't have that, haven't had, like, the cognition, the meaningful cognition that would, like, have a... But I know what you're talking about. Because, for instance, when I meditate, okay, and I go into a meditative state, I can start to perceive astral beings in the ether, okay? Right. And so here I am, and I'm moving to a clairvoyant state, and then now I'm seeing spiritual beings moving around me in my environment that I didn't see in a regular active-minded state. Well, mind you, that could be like, listen, we got to be clear. And I said this once before. Now, back when I was once upon a time you know, in a certain state of consciousness, I saw all types of spiritual beings too. But the more I cleaned myself up on the path and started being on this path, that began to fade and everything became clear. See, when you got a mirror, and remember, when you look in the mirror, you are seeing a reflection of light coming back to you. So if a group of people in a mirror, they all look at the same reflection of light, but they see it in all of these different images. But it's just a reflective of light coming back to you. But if you got stuff all on the mirror, you can't see that good. You're looking through the mirror dimly. So you might see all types of stuff, shadows that ain't really supposed to be there. What we got to do is clean up the lens so we can see more clearly. Sort of like a person is scared in the dark and they think something spooky under the bed, but nothing there. Your mind is telling you it's there. So these manifestations, now I think uh, Steiner and, and there's probably others who would say that what one like myself is perceiving are entities of my own soul. So they're of your own. So your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own, your own desires, your own creations. And you've cast off these shadows and these phantoms and they see and they have a life of their own because they've been cast off. Of right. Their life. And so by cleaning up your soul's spiritual mindscape that resolves all of these uh, uh, beings that are just lingering around without a home, basically. Right. That are just following you. And then you see something else. All of a sudden, the world around you becomes brighter. Right. Because you can, what? See, we got so much power, those beings ain't got to exist. You made them exist. Mm -hmm. We do it all the time. When one person goes from one religion to another or trade gods, why did the god change all of a sudden? You did that. Mm -hmm. Before it was somebody else. Now you got somebody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they became real. Now you know the truth. What happened before? Well, I mean, in, in, in that sense, I think some might take it like, well, you choose to subscribe to a different god or a different religion, but isn't the same as maybe like you're actively perceiving a phenomenon that, you know, maybe isn't what you thought of. I know this is a touchy subject because what people will say, going back to experience, one lady said, well, I'm just telling you the experience I had. Mm. You can't go past that. That is the experience you had that you created. Mm -hmm. 
but that you spell them back to, it is still being projected from your mind. Mm -hmm. So what I guess I'm wondering is what, uh, since you had this similar experiences, you know, you've seen beings about you, or right. what, and then what, ex how, how well you could, or what, how you can articulate to me, uh, or to the viewers and listeners, what changed, or what was the differential between where you started in dead physicality to, okay, now there's... Oh, well, that's heavy right there. To. Due to a person's culture, your belief system, and what's being dictated in you, when you're a baby, you are a sponge. All of these different people are creating, creating you before you even got created. Why right. do I say that? Because when I travel to different territories on the planet, a person's cultural background is coming up on what they see, even though I'm working with the same energy. In other words, India, they'll tell me Babaji about some energy they see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a Muslim country, they saw a lot. Here in America, they see Jesus. Due to your cultural background, that also dictate what you're going to see. A spirit guide, angels. Now, if you was never taught that, you wouldn't have said that. You had to be taught that first on what to call it. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that these people of these different cultures belong to these different masters, or are they simply calling the same master by different names? Different names on how you're perceiving it. Mm -hmm. We all deal with perception again. Perception means everything. Mm -hmm. And for me to be more open-minded, to see through it, first of all, I had to test it. I had the power to what? Don't use them. That's how I started with the spirit guides. Well, I don't need no spirit guides. Boom. Oh, I could bring them back if I want to. Boom. Oh, I could let. That's your mind. How do you, how do you want to go through life? <laughs> that's what you're doing. If we say we're a creator, you're either going to be one or you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you got to take responsibility for it. You create. Yeah, I think... Uh, does somebody just need to have the impulse that they no longer want to be governed or led about by a, a spiritual guide? Like a, 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 a daimon. Right. A daimon. You've heard this term before? Mm hmm And so have you had that experience? Is that what you call the consciousness? Is that another spiritual guide to you? Or what is this? Yeah, the law depends on, like, it depends what you need again. What you want to create and what you need at your time. See, for me to say that this is all you need to do, I can't say that for you. I know a woman who's very good at working with spirit guides, and for you to tell her to leave them alone, she ain't going to do it. And for you to tell her that's her own mind, she don't want to hear that because that's how she's making her living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's very good at working with the spirit guides. She could call on them. They'll change the frequency of the room. But at the same time, I could walk in a room, don't call on no spirit guide, and the frequency of change too. That's the way I'm thinking. See, you got two types of spiritual helpers. You got one who will use their own body, their own physical body, their own physical consciousness. And there's another one who uses tools. You know, like the crystals, the wands, the this, the that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make one better than the other. It's how they perceive on how going about it. Some people like using tools. I forgot what they call them. And there are some people who just use their straight physical body, use their consciousness. Okay. So I'm just a person that's, conscious, that's comfortable using myself. I'm, I'm my own creator. There's nothing else. I'm comfortable with it. A lot of people don't feel comfortable like that. Mm -hmm. They need tools. They need training wheels. and You know, not training wheels. They just need tools to feel mm -hmm. a lot more comfortable. I guess I'm trying to, like, glue together the two concepts because, well, I think, uh, of the two, your mode is more ideal, obviously, instead of working easier. a via or some sort of conduit or whatever. Right. You know, but then at the same time, you are still feeling like there's, okay, there's beings, whether it's elemental or, or angelic or spiritual beings of a higher order, which exist, even though we all kind of, you know, exist concurrently, they also exist separately. And so then it's like, well, they bring something different to the table Something I like how you say that brings up so that's me also bringing something different to the table that I have to grow into. 
Because remember, we're talking about the oneness consciousness. Mm -hmm. I'm everything. Mm -hmm. So even when I was saying consciousness can what be outside a physical body, that's still me. I'm claiming it. And there's different levels. That's why my, my growth don't end yet. This is, this is the good thing about it. You're, you're growing, but you know this now. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, going back to the person who's... It, let's just take it. Some people have more confidence than others. Just on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, some people could do more things than others because they believe in themselves more. Some people are like that. So that's why some people choose to use tools or spirit guides because they haven't got to that level to fully bring it out of themselves yet or who they are. You understand? Mm -hmm. Whether they ever get there, I don't know. I think something you said was powerful just now is that you claim it. Like, um, and that was kind of the thing I was just hung up on when I asked that question, is how do you uh, assert yourself you know, assert your authority or uh, identity, uh, you know, uh, over these things or, you know, assume the uh, responsibility oh. of these things. Well, it could be, see, it's easier said than done. It could be scary at first. Like, for instance, somebody who's in religion, let me just say, not picking on the church, but say somebody in the church, you're growing up in the church. Boy, if you leave the Lord, you're in trouble. So this is on their mind. And of course, if you skip a day out of church, people will say you backslid if you stay too far out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So all this is going on in your mind. So if you stay away too long, you don't want to. But then again, you still expect something bad to happen to you because they have programmed you that you didn't move away from the Lord because you ain't going to the certain institution or whatever. So that could be a trap too, you understand. A real bad fear-based frequency, I but not leave too far because of what will happen to me on the stories that was told. And that could be not only the church, you could be a Muslim or you know anybody. And that's a fear-based frequency that's set on you and you're going to hell. <laughs> so that's real hard to get past if you grew up with that type of thought on your mind. You understand? Mm -hmm. So a lot of this stuff, you do have to, um, like I said, they got a group in Europe called Cotton in the Pole Pit, and that's for people who was uh, preaching something or teaching something for a long time, and they're making their livelihood off of it. Many people expect them to be in it. And it's hard to break away from certain things that you trap yourself in a box of a belief system. So to break a belief system is easier said than done, depending on where you're at. Another one is dealing with food. There's nutritionists out there. You cannot tell them that this food has to give you this, this, and this. And those are the hardest people to break in order to come into the breath area knowledge. They got so much faith in food mm -hmm. of oh. what it's going to give them, what it's going to do for them, that they can't see the other side of it, even though the concepts seem good. But that belief system is hard to break. So they're imprisoned by their own dogmas. You're imprisoned by your own dogmas. That's what everybody's dealing with. Mm -hmm. So to break out of that box of the dogma that you trapped yourself into, that's your own experience. Can you get past your own trap that you put on yourself? Nobody else is doing it for you. Mm -hmm. You're doing it. And so when a person is like plotting out their future and they're deciding look, uh, I'm limitless, and, you know, the universe, you know, I'm a microcosm of the macrocosm, and God is in me, and I'm a creator, and all of this, and they're assuming, basically, like, you know, lordship over themselves, they're, right. they're identifying God within themselves, and, you know, and a lot of people, you know, get afraid of that, because even though the Bible says, you know, at least for, you know, the, the Christians, you know, you know, Jesus said, you said that, I said that you are gods, you know, and in one hand, you know, that's there, and then you'll have people who say it's blasphemy because, you know, there's only one God, and I'm not a God. I wouldn't assume that about myself, but then we're made in the image well, of God. Well, everything is easier said than done. You're making this claim, but then again, we got to use wisdom. Just don't say it to the people. You ain't got to tell people nothing. Mm -hmm. 
This be your God. I don't got to go around telling people I'm, you know, this, that, the other, and start this other argument. All you're doing is bringing attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and live it. Mm -hmm. and that solves everything. Yeah, I guess what I'm thinking in my head is I hear all of these things that people are saying, and a lot of it, it makes sense. I see where they're coming from, and it's almost like there's a, an, almost an overwhelming argument against assuming what is also there, which is the fact of what you're saying. Right. And so it's kind of like you have to s stand up in spite of what everybody's saying. And, and that's what it takes. That's how all changes are made and, you know, on a collective basis. There's somebody that got to stand up and there's pretty soon and somebody else. That's how everything comes into being. Even going back to vegetarianism, back in the 60s when it came here in the West, it was beat up on all this other stuff. And here we are some, what, 40, 50, 60 years later, and they ain't like everybody got the memo. <laughs> yeah. But right now, people still say, leave meats alone and this and that, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, but somebody had to stand up for it to spread like it's going. So even when we teach the breath theory of knowledge, it went through its knocks, its hits, as it's trying to resurrect. Here we are now in the last five years, it's got even bigger. But even then, I don't expect everybody to come food free, don't care. But what we're trying to say is a health message, you should at least get the memo that excess of eating is going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? And if you can catch that, you're doing good. And then we'll take it from there. All food has an energy to it. You know, stuff like that. People catching the memo because if you ain't got to argue with nobody. You live in your body and you're going to have problems if you do that. That's the science behind it right there. <laughs> That's why we got intermittent fasting. That doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think the biggest problem right now is uh, moderation is very difficult to, uh, to sell people. It's difficult to buy. People think people who are being you know, moderate in their eating or whatever are simply people who are just very, want to play it safe, middle, middle of the road sort of thing. But I think it goes with your uh, consistency thing and, uh, and well I don't think it's hard to sell people and it was happening is and this is what I had to figure out food is considered a drug it, it puts off the same hormones in the body as a drug because there's many people who want to make changes but it's hard to due to the situation you're in and when you can't get out of it you get mad, there's jealousy that comes up, anger, envy, and you get mad at the system around you. And then plus there's other things that's getting us into to fill this void up. The system itself, like I said, you know, we're chasing the paper tickets, you're getting this ambition that's built in you to try to capture happiness and comfort. And we're finding out you can't capture it. Mm -hmm. So this goes deeper than anything that we ever imagined or where we at right now. So the food part or even teaching the breath theory and curriculum isn't the problem. It goes beyond that due to the system that we created that is artificial and it goes against nature. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Artificial goes against nature. Yeah. Whoa. Did I say that? <laughs> Yeah, you know, what I, I, what I meant uh, when I said that it's, it's hard to sell people on moderation, I think uh, most people will say moderation is key, you know, everything yeah. in moderation. So on one hand, we all subscribe to it in word. In but, word. But then when it comes to accepting it or, as I meant, buying it as a solution to anything, it seems almost too simple to be effectual. It's not extreme enough to create the kind of change that people want, which is immediate, overnight, 180 kind of change. Oh yeah, that's not going, right. They think it's a, it's a kappa. I mean, I'm really talking, speaking for myself in a lot of ways because, you know, in watching, you know, how my brain's thinking and how it's accepted the idea of moderation, I've really underestimated it, you know, growing up because it wasn't like, you know, a quick fix, a silver bullet or something. Oh, gotcha. It's, you know, if it was moderation, isn't there enough people practicing moderation that we'd see, you know, great success all around us? But I don't think we realize that 
hardly nobody practices moderation in one way or another we're all enemies. Oh, exactly, because like we was talking earlier about food, sexual relations, and drink, uh, and you, you're taught this ambition to go get more of it, to capture it, but on the other hand, if you don't have enough, you're called a loser. Mm -hmm. So that's a line that people don't want to go to either. You understand? You hear about spirituality, but you're saying, why can't I have both? Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem is. The society will put you down or people around you. And the people that put the most demand on you about being somebody or being something is your own family. And that's why people have family problems. They want me to be this. They want me to be that. They want me to earn this much. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, even though you could be happy, there's a problem. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> I mean, because part of their personal value goes, you know, goes up when you go up, you know, you know. Right. And so, and if you don't go up, then it just, you know, amplifies, you know, their, you know, shortcomings or whatever. In the so this was a generational thing that took place. So it's going to take time. See, any change a society is making is going to take time. It's going to go through its growing pains. It's not going to happen overnight. It's a period of time. But we're moving pretty fast, which is the good part. So we got to look at the bright side. Everywhere I travel to, there's people who do got the memo of moderation like never before. You know, more so than their grandparents and stuff like that. So the memo is getting through. Mm -hmm. um, but as we keep doing this and keep being on this plight, uh, there's more people, like I said, there's a reason why you see fasting on the scene and medical benefits like never before. And, these different food changes and stuff like this. That shows, again, the light overall is transforming everybody. Mm. So we got to look at both sides of it, but the negative is uh, really fading away fast. It's not lasting, because we got enough in our collective history right now on know what things will work and what things don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do know this collectively. <laughs> Interesting. Ellie Tom... You're always so profound with anything that I'll ask you. Steiner says, Rudolf Steiner, he says that we need to learn to love the rays of the sun. That literally learning to love the rays right. of the sun is a very important part and unavoidable part of our spiritual development. Mm -hmm. You love the sun. Right. What's your favorite part of the sun ray? Well, see, I like this, that word ray. Now, that word ray, R-A, rock. Mm -hmm. They used it back in Egypt. But keep in mind that this civilization is on a lot of things that Egypt was using and cultivating. That is one of the longest running civilizations that's still intact where we got a lot of information from. So we use words like ray of the sun, radar, radiance, uh, you know, all dealing with these rays of the sun that gives light. And everybody knows who's in the agriculture, farming, how much that sunlight counts on getting this production. So all humans on the planet, let me just wrap it up. You're living off the sun directly or indirectly, all life forms. Now we ain't talking about the extreme of fowls. Don't worry about them. <laughs> but humans are living off the sun. So learning to love the rays of the sun just make clear cut sense. Right now we're in the age where we're learning you got this electromagnetic field that's coming off the body. You got that word electric. Then you got that word magnetism. Then of course Nikolai tells his name is coming back. He's creating these instruments where there's electricity all in the atmosphere. Where is it coming from? The power. Heat represents energy. Energy represents life. It comes from the sun. That's what was hitting. Now we were talking earlier about the movie The Matrix. Everybody and their mama saw The Matrix. But one part they didn't catch. The whole movie, the reason why they was in that condition, because they blocked out the sun. Mm -hmm. They block, That's what the whole movie talking about. When they blocked out the sun, that's what put everybody in bondage. So what we just did to each other, humanity, we blocked out the importance of the sun. We know it, but we don't know it. We made up religion in this place. But it's the sun rays that's affecting you, keeping you alive. It's looking at you every day. It affects you every day. But 
saying, oh, we don't, we can't. But what's put in my mind, sun worship is primitive. That shows ignorance. No, it don't. That's the number one uh, uh, thermal radiator that's keeping everything alive. So you coming back into it on, depending on the sensitivity of what you can deal with, it will lower your blood pressure, give you vitamin D. I could go on and on. All of this good stuff, especially when you do it with meditation and you watch what you put into your body and don't overeat, you'll be healthy dealing with the sun. So when, <coughs> so when we think of, or like the biblical idea, like, you know, you know, the heathen who practice sun worship, is, are, is that talking about people who are worshiping a physical sun as opposed to having an understanding of the spiritual sun? Well, sun? listen at this. Religion is all dealing with sun worship. It's just covered up. That's why Jesus' birthday is what? The 25th of December. That's the winter solstice, the what? Longest day of the sun, I believe, or the shortest day, one of them. Mm -hmm. Then his birthday of going into the springtime. Holy Biblica means Holy Son, S-U-N. So if you realize it or not, being in the church, you're worshiping the sun. Muslims pray five times a day from sunrise to five different phases throughout the day. Everybody's worshiping the sun. They mm -hmm. might as well get over it. Yeah, I mean, it's part of every kind it's of... It's part of everybody what they're doing right now. Every religion. But now instead of breaking that, about these other forces... Just go directly and just start benefiting off of it. Mm -hmm. And it's dealing with all plant life, dealing with photosynthesis. And we as humans practice photosynthesis also. You can't do it because you're blocked off from the sun due to your understanding. That's what a breatharian is. Mm. You know a lot about human photosynthesis. You should write a book about it. Oh, wait, he did. <laughs> human Photosynthesis 101. Now available on Amazon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is just getting real. It's the understanding yeah. of it. And like I said, the sun puts so much energy to the earth in one hour that all the industries of the planet can't keep up with it tenfold. We just don't have the equipment yet, to, like I said, to harness it. But the body can. Now, that don't mean you got to go out and stand directly up under it, you know, because some people are more sensitive to the sun than others. We're not saying that. It's the awareness of how to use the energy from it and the body already knows how to collect it. Mm -hmm. Everybody has neural melanin going for them, through them, and that's a, a, a harvester of light, a harvester of energy. Mm -hmm. When they talk about ch chakras, they just talk at energy centers. There's energy centers all over the body. Everywhere there's a bend, that's an energy center where energy is collected to go through the body smoothly. We got our neural system that's going through the body. All of this deals with electricity. Is this a far fetched no more? Matter of fact, when people question me this, well, I don't even have people question me or challenge me like they used to. I mean, it would be foolish. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get caught up in what's happening. But the main thing, it ain't about the philosophy of it. It's about you putting your body into the cycle to start grabbing these energies, these more subtle energies. See, just by doing a meditation and if you do it properly, opening up your chakras and stuff, you should have more energy. Mm -hmm. You're taking your consciousness, even your mind where it goes and focus on something, that's energy. This ain't far-fetched. We ain't making it up. Work with yourself. This is the great work. You are retransforming the behavior of how your body uh, responds to the atmosphere. So when religion is talking about man's relationship to God and other religions talk about what man's relationship to the universe, man's relationship to nature, whatever word you use, you can't get out of it. You have a relationship to this and this is what you're working on. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that comes to mind is uh, one of the causes of ADD, ADHD heard from one source, which I grew up with the ADD, ADHD, they say it was, uh, well, one of the causes, is a lack of sunlight. So kids, right. everybody's in the house, then you're in the car, then you're in the school or the work, and you're back in the car, and then you're safe from the sun, back at home. And nobody's out there getting any sun anymore. Oh, see, there's so much that's taking place. You got what? You brought up that sickness. 
Then they got the one dealing with uh, people working night shift up under the light too much at night so the melatonin can't go through their third eye. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, you're probably sleeping through the daytime. Then when I was in southern Egypt, I was in this place uh, in Nubia where people was coming down there who was sick just to sleep in some of their houses because some of their houses, the weather was perfect and it didn't have no roof on, on, on the uh, ceiling. So that means that the flow of energy, which is air, which is a substance, that's the definition of it. That right there will heal the body. See, it's these subtle things. Those are what we mean by subtle energies that we haven't been paying attention to. But we have created these lives of running in this rat race. You understand? These busy schedules, eating as you're running. You understand? <laughs> mm -hmm. And it caused problems. This is what we're dealing with. Like we said, nature has an antidote for any poison. And nature don't cause us disease. Man causes disease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, further along these lines, sunglasses tinting on people's uh, car windows. Right. I mean, sunglasses, I mean, that issue alone, I think I heard one doctor say, you know, the eyes get the vitamin E from the sun, the eyes get the sunlight, and then it causes the cells to produce uh, more melanin or something, which acts as a natural, like, uh, sunscreen in a sense. And so people with sunglasses on have unprotected uh, skin because they're not getting the signal to produce the things that would, you know, protect or harvest It goes on and on and on. See, nothing beats a, how should I say, a natural lifestyle. You understand? Even down to taking your shoes off, just grounding to the earth, all those electrons coming up. These sound like simple things. No, you can't see it. But it makes a difference on the health of the body. Now, that's not saying you got to walk around barefooted all the time. We're not saying go back primitive and just walk around naked. <laughs> but we're saying be more mindful, you understand, on how you, how's your relationship to these natural forces is all around you. And like we said, what makes a breath there and a breath there in, that's a person that's a good energy worker. I just became good at it. I've done it so long, I became good at it. <laughs> I, I realize it. You got to know it. You got to practice it. And perfect practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. And it's natural. But going back to what we said, food, sexual relationships, and drinking is necessary in this realm. Now, food, sexual relationships, and drink is all one and the same thing. And food, sexual relationships, and drink is what? The breath there and path. You just learn new ways on how to use it for the body. You didn't cut them off. That's the problem when people try to come on a path. Oh, the human could go without eating food. We didn't say that. You have to redefine food through your perception. Mm -hmm. And learn other ways on how to nourish the body. You can nourish the body more ways than just through the mouth. It's time to wake up to this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on that note, so when somebody is uh, wanting to change their food source, they really need to focus on thinking new energy sources. Absolutely. There's a meditation where you can actually just tell your body to get all this, whatever it needs from other sources. Now that's you talking to yourself, but you at least got to convince yourself. See, it's through repetition. Whoever you talking to, see, we're made up of words. Mm -hmm. Who's ever talking to you, that's going to be your new belief system. So that's why for people do call me and say, I've been looking at your YouTube channel and your videos really helping me. I know because it's being talked over and over again. Somebody's talking to you differently. Mm -hmm. And that happens anywhere. That's how we are as human beings. You get a new group of friends talk, using a new term, a new word. That will get in you just by you hanging with them. Yeah. And that's how we got the last program. Somebody through the education, repetition, yeah. over and over again. It was everywhere, and that's what you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We're creatures of habits, creatures of programs, we're mimickers. It's easy to program. That's what the definition of a person is.
due to the Kabbalah knowledge. A person is a program. That's it. Just like a computer, a program. And in order for you to expand your consciousness, you need a new program. You're not going to do it with that same program you get. It's not going to happen. So when you say, and I know you talked about this at length, that you have no problems in life. Right. And that's because of the programming that you've given yourself. The program. To see life as not being full of problems. You don't respond to things as problematic. Right. And then so the you, things to give you increased stimuli is opportunity for your growth. Period. And it always ends up like that. <laughs> that's heavy. But that's the way things are. You are in a user friendly universe and we have to understand this. Like I said, nature don't cause the disease. It's the thinking that causes the disease. Mm -hmm. I subscribe to that. You know, the Louise Hayes, heal your body, A to Z, you can heal your life and her whole thing. Right. Oh, what's your disease? And this is the thought, pro you know, the likely thought a pattern that's causing it. And right. here's the affirmation that'll take care of that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty. Absolutely. So, this reprogramming, we have to work at it. You understand? And that's the great work again. <laughs> And it can happen. You stay consistent, there's going to be changes. It ain't like it's not. Mm -hmm. It's going to be changes because that's energy loves to move. It loves to transform itself. So you got all of this in your favor. <laughs> well, you know, you're here in Chicago and, you know, we're going to be doing our retreat here over the next couple days. And we're going to be doing meditations. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing Qigong. We'll be doing tree poses. <laughs> I'm excited to get into the tree pose more because I know it's really big deal for you. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. You have to really like you know powerful energy flow stance. Right. And so I mean it makes sense to. Absolutely, and that's usually the best one for people because you can feel your own energy working for you with the atmosphere. So it don't need you. We're getting in our own way. That's what it is. That's why your perception needs to be opened up, that your body can already do these things with the environment because it's one with the environment already. So it's just getting out of your own way. A human animal. Mm -hmm. now, I know we hate to call ourselves animals, but you're not separated. You're a human animal. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that word. That just means animated. Mm -hmm. But we, for some reason, and when you look at the definition of animals, basically anything with a vertebrae, a spinal cord, and, you know, the organism, that's what we are. What, what, what make, make you think you ain't? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your own cat would eat you. You mm -hmm. understand? <laughs> if it had to. So, but once we understand we're a part of nature, and you're not separated from it, in no way means necessary, this is what the Brethren Journey is telling you. So you're not disconnected saying, I'm not eating nothing. You're dealing with energy flow, which everything is. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, my brain's going slow. You know why? Because, <laughs> unlike you, I don't have perfect energy flow. <laughs> you could be this, but instead you're this, people. Do something about it. <laughs> oh, this is good. So again, we'll be doing our retreat, our different meditations, and we're going to keep on growing. Keep yeah. cultivating it. Keep growing so the energy can go stronger. Mm -hmm. And it will. That's its nature too. But you must stay consistent. Don't let your mind talk you out of it. Just stay consistent. <laughs> and perfect practice. And perfect practice. And Thanks don't look at food as an enemy. Like I said, that is necessary in this realm. Now this is what I had to tell this one woman. She said, uh, but I kind of want something that's heavier. Okay, if you want something heavier, go eat something that's heavier, you know, like a burrito. Mm -hmm. All right, well, go eat a burrito then. We didn't say don't go eat a burrito, go eat the burrito. But make sure you chew it thoroughly into a liquid and make sure you just get one burrito. I think that's what happened with the burrito that I ate earlier. Uh, Chipotle, this bitch. Um, <laughs> 
she said, you know me so well. Yeah, just eat one. We ain't say go beat up on yourself. Eat one and chew it well. Mm. That's what we're talking about. Or put it in the blender and drink it. Right, something Even like that. And then <laughs> stay on your meditation, stay grabbing these other energy sources, you'll be successful. But you try to put these little blocks up on you, you know, you're going to do that, play a game. You ain't going to last long. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I appreciate your transparency on these issues because, you know, there's a lot of misconception, obviously, as you know, right. about how people come about breatharianism, how they become breatharianism. I think some people are just, you know, super blessed or super... Right, God gifted, we ain't got nothing to do with that. But it's actually, you know, your discipline and your uh, cooperation with the truth, and that actually does make you spiritually evolved. But, exactly. But it's like, you know, everything you think that separates us, it's like, look, you got to discipline yourself to do the things and then... Exactly. You know, Stay consistent and let it work for you. Hmm. Let something work for you instead of you trying to work it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You can't force it. <laughs> so this is good once again. Yeah. <sighs> so we won't force the end of this. We'll just go... <sighs> I hope y'all got a lot out of this. <laughs> 